So far, you've met two ways of collecting data in Swift, arrays and dictionaries. Well, there's a third way of doing this called sets. They work similarly to arrays, except they don't remember the order you add things and they don't allow duplicates. Creating set is much like creating an array. Tell it what kind of things you want to store, then go ahead and add items. But there are two important differences and they're best shown off with some code. First up, let's make a set of some actors. Let actors equals a set, Denzel Washington, Tom Cruise, Nicolas Cage, and Samuel L. Jackson. Notice how this actually creates an array inside the set. That's intentional and it's a standard way of making sets from fixed data. Remember, the set will automatically remove any duplicate values and it won't remember the exact order that was used in the array. You can see it yourself in an Xcode playground. Here's our actors set. And if I print out actors here, it's gonna print out Samuel L. Jackson, Nicholas Cage, Tom Cruise, and Denzel Washington. So actually the reverse order of what we put in and yours could be completely different. Now you might see them in the original order, but you might see it in this order or a wholly other order, it doesn't matter. The set does not care what order its items come in. The second difference is when adding items, uh, you wanna do it differently because uh, you don't append items because there's no way to append it. There's no order to the set. Instead, we insert items. So here, I could have said something like var actors is a set of string actors dot insert Denzel Washington and then actors dot insert Tom Cruise and Daisy actors dot insert and Nicholas Cage and one last one insert everyone's favorite uh, angry chap with a gun Samuel L. Jackson. So we're now saying insert, not append. That's intentional. When you had an array of strings, we'd have had append, 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 but it doesn't make sense here because there's nothing to append to. We aren't putting to the end of the set, we're just putting it into the set. There is no order. It'll store them in the order it wants. Let's print out actors again and see what we get the second time around. So now uh, Denzel, Tom, Nicholas, Sam. So actually the original order is now currently in there, but we just don't know. It's different every time. That's how it works. Now, you might think <laughs> at this point, sets just sound like bad arrays, like simplified arrays. After all, if you can't have duplicates and you lose the order of your items, why not just use arrays? They have extra powers. Well, it turns out both of those restrictions actually get turned into an advantage. First, not storing duplicates is sometimes exactly what you want. There's a reason I went for actors here. You might be familiar with the Screen Actors Guild, which requires all actors must have a unique stage name. And if you, if you have a name uh, that someone else has chosen, pick a new name, basically. Uh, for example, um, Michael Keaton, who was in Spider-Man Homecoming, he was in Toy Story 3, Batman and more. That's not his real name. His real name is Michael Douglas, but there was already someone called Michael Douglas. He was in uh, Falling Down, Romancing the Stone, was in Avengers 2 maybe. Um, he was already in the Screen Actors Guild as Michael Douglas, and so Michael Keaton had to have this new name, Michael Keaton. It's not his real name. He had to have a unique name, no duplicates allowed. Second, yes, we're losing the ordering of data. So we aren't storing the exact order we specify. But instead of that, set store their data in a highly optimized order that makes it very, very fast to locate items. And the difference isn't like a small little rounding error, it's gigantic. If you had a thousand movie names, for example, and you use something like contains, to say, hey, is the Dark Knight in there, for example. Swift with an array has to go through zero. Are you Dark Knight? Nope. 
one, you don't like, nope, 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 a thousand times, maybe isn't there at all, before saying yes or no. In comparison, when you use contains on a set, it runs so fast, you would struggle to measure it meaningfully. You're being 0 point naught 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 seconds, right? Even with a million items in the set, or even 10 million items in the set, it's extraordinarily fast. It runs instantly, no matter how big it is. It's optimized specifically for fast lookup of items. Now, most of the time, you are gonna find yourself using arrays. You just are. But sometimes, just sometimes, you're gonna find a set is exactly the right choice to solve your current problem. And it'll make otherwise slow code run in no time at all. Now, I mentioned contains. Alongside that, you'll also find count, so you can read the number of items in a set. And also sorted, you can sort a set. Now remember, they don't have an order in a set. So when you sort a set, you'll get back a sorted array containing the set's items.